light part of the colors I'm going to pull from my image and it's going to be a bright green or a kind of a greenish color and also a dark greenish color to match that kind of mossy texture. Now with those colors created go to shader create effects vertex map and we're going to grab the second vertex map not the one that's uh, for the bottom of the mountain ridge but uh, the one that's for the top and we're going to rename that vertex map and call it grass on mountain and we're going to drop that into the vertex map section now this render will show that the green mossy stuff has pasted itself on top of our mountainous layer which is exactly what we were going for now we're moving on to lighting so let's go ahead and drop a light into our stage and we're going to move this toward the horizon of our shot and this is going to be our sun kind of uh, light so prote to protect you guys from watching me do all these little uh, changes and adjustments here's what color I used for my first light it's a uh, kind of a yellowish tint with an intensity of 125 percent the type is an Omni and I used an area shadow one light is not going to do for this scene so I created a second light and we're going to set this type to an area light and this area light is going to stretch the entire length of the side of the scene and it's going to shoot off a yellowish kind of light that's going to kind of be sunnish and uh, we're going to set the intensity to about 50 percent with no shadows finally we're going to create a string of low intensity lights so copy the main light and set the intensity down to maybe 10 percent omni with no shadow from there we're going to go and create a spline and we're going to stretch it down the entire length of this mountain ridge uh, this is so that we don't have to do any type of global illumination so we got this spline we're going to go to MoGraph cloner object drop the light under the cloner object and in cloner object we're going to set the mode to object and then we're going to drop in our spline and this is going to put a whole bunch of lights all along that spline we just drew we're going to make it even and we are going to kind of eyeball how we're going to place this uh, line of lights in the scene and this is going to significantly lighten up our scene without going through the route of global illumination so at this point I turned to my beautiful wife and I asked her what do you think about this and she said that the rocks were too big and they needed to be scattered out more and displaced and so in this situation I said absolutely honey I'll do it and going out to all the guys out there just a little bit of food for thought from me to you whenever your wife asks you to do something just do it because as someone once said who was much wiser than me would you rather be right or would you rather be happy um, just a little something to think about so we're gonna select our plane which is our water right click cinema 4t tags and we're gonna go to add a compositing tag inside the compositing tag under the object buffer we're gonna enable this as object buffer number one then we're gonna go to the other objects in our scene and add compositing tags to those as well so for the rocky mountain face uh, we're going to add another tag and that's gonna be object buffer number two then for the rocks in the ocean those are gonna be object buffer number three now if you don't know what object buffers are real quick explanation it's going to create a m image mat a motion mat based on uh, that can be translated into after effects um, it's a really quick easy way without rendering multiple passes in QuickTime. We actually embed that information into an RPS sequence so we're not duplicating stuff and 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 creating a lot of extra memory uh, usage uh, if you want to know more about that check out tutorial number one that completely explains everything about RPS sequences so I created a camera and set a keyframe at frame zero and set my timeline to 300 frames and then at frame 300 I moved my camera to pan upward and a little forward and I set another keyframe at frame 300 now um, to get this to go in a straight line uh, go to show F curves 
uh, select all the points by Apple A and then set it to linear instead of a, uh, 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 an ease in or ease out. Then to get your render settings going, click on the render settings button. In the output, we're going to choose film and we're going to go to the HD 720p. We're going to make sure in the frame range we select all frames. For the path, we're going to create a new folder and for me, I usually call these uh, sequence. And I'm going to go ahead and create this sequence, um, give it a, save it as a file name, so I'm saving this as shot1 and select RPF format and turn on all your options except the bottom two. Set your depth to 16-bit with a save compositing file, turn on multipass and go save this as shot1 as well and turn this to QuickTime Movie. Then we're going to go into effects and we're going to add an ambient occlusion. Then we're going to go into multi pass and we're going to add a reflection pass. We're going to add a depth pass. We're going to go add a we're going to add object buffers to all the compositing tags with object buffers attached to them for our materials and uh, then uh, you know we can add in some other ones just in case like material luminance we're gonna need that for the water foam and uh, then we're gonna click on anti-alias we're gonna set it at best now just as a rule of thumb the higher your minimum and maximum levels are the longer it's gonna take to render and this took long enough so I'm gonna set this to a minimum level of one by one and a max level of 4x4 four four, and I'm not going to go any higher than that. Then for the sky I'm going to go to compositing tag and in tag I'm going to turn off scene by camera. Now if you render this entire sequence out it's going to look something kind of like this. Now keep this in mind guys this shot right here is shot at 300 by 200 pixels and it took a minute to render so by the time you boost it up to a 720p image each one of these frames with high resolution anti-aliasing with lights with everything like that is going to take about half an hour to do so be prepared to have long wait times for water but you know that's just kind of the trade-off you get when you do do displacements of any type long render times but the result is worth it um, I hope you've enjoyed this part, part one of this tutorial. Uh, please check out part two. It's going to go over the uh, how to lay it in, how to add the horizon line, how to color correct it, how to add a fog effect, which will lighten the back of the uh, shot itself. So as you look out into the distance, it gets uh, foggier, it gets less bright, it gets less contrasty, which is how things look in real life. So um, when you get a chance, check out part two. Otherwise, thanks for checking out this uh, tutorial, and we will see you in a second.